Hi, and welcome to this latest immigration law update video. In this video, I'm going to look at some refugee law and the question of credibility and corroboration. In fact, we're going to look at the standard of proof in protection claims and particularly on how we challenge adverse decisions on credibility by the tribunal. And the reason I'm doing this is because of a recent case called MAH Egypt. It's a case from the Court of Appeal from 28th of February this year. And this will be important. And the bits I've put on screen, the paragraphs from the judgment will be useful for you to cite in your representations if you're making a protection claim on behalf of a client, maybe in your appeal skeleton arguments, or even in your onward grounds of appeal. The link to this judgment, the Bailey link, is below this video. So this confer uh, case concerned a protection claim from an Egyptian national. His fear was relating because of his father and his father being suspected of being part of the Muslim Brotherhood. In this case, because of the procedural history, the upper tribunal were in fact acting as the tribunal of fact and dismissed his protection claim because of a lack of credibility. Look at paragraph one, which is on your screen on my slide. Now, as Lord Justice Singh says, it's unlikely normally for challenges to credibility findings to succeed on appeal. But this, on closer analysis, was not a typical case about credibility because it didn't turn on the assessments of, of the appellant's demeanour, although he says there can be dangers with an over-reliance on demeanour. And it didn't concern the inherent implausibility of the appellant's evidence or the fact he told lies or was inconsistent. These are the sort of normal reasons for an adverse credibility finding. In this case, look at the final sentence. The reason why the appellant was not believed by the upper tribunal was that it considered that there were further steps he could and should have taken to adduce evidence which would corroborate his accounts. They didn't believe him because of effectively a lack of corroboration. And at paragraph four of the judgment, Lord Justice Singh says, he's come to the conclusion that the upper tribunal erred in its approach to the case because what they did in substance was apply too high a standard of proof when the law requires no more than a reasonable degree of likelihood. Because effectively what they did was require the appellant to produce corroborative evidence to support various aspects of his account when there is no requirement in law that there must be corroboration. Now, I'm not going to go in through all the paragraphs that deal with all the factual background, but give you some key paragraphs which you can use in your representations, grounds and skeleton arguments in terms of the standard of proof and credibility. So paragraphs 49 to 52 are helpful. There's some background to the formulation of the lower standard of proof, the reasonable degree of likelihood in paragraphs 49 and 50 and the different formulations there of a reasonable possibility, uh, a real chance, a real as opposed to a fanciful risk. But I wanted to highlight paragraphs 51 and 52. In 51, Lord Justice Singh says, strictly speaking, it could be said that it is not entirely accurate to refer to this as a standard of proof because the applicant does not in fact have to prove anything. It could more accurately be, des be described as being an assessment of risk. And I think that's key. What the tribunal is doing is making an assessment of risk. So at paragraph 52, he goes on to say, it is also well established that the standard required is less than a 50% chance of persecution occurring. So it's not the balance of probabilities. Even a 10% chance that an applicant will face persecution for a convention reason may satisfy the relevant test. And he cites various jurisprudence, which were cited by approval in the key case of Karen Karen back from the year 2000. 
In terms of credibility assessments, paragraph 57 says this, sometimes, as in the present case, the issue of the applicant's credibility may arise, but it is important to recall that this issue must be considered in the context of the rel relatively low standard of proof. And he cites Lord Wilson in KV Sri Lanka. The conclusion about credibility always rests with the decision maker following a critical survey of all the evidence. Two points arise from that. That shows how difficult it is to challenge credibility assessments because it's a matter for the decision maker. But there has to be a proper survey of all of the evidence. And the Court of Appeal go on to cite from a helpful case back from 2019, a decision of Lord Justice Green of SB Sri Lanka. And this gives some helpful guidance in terms of the way the tribunal is to assess credibility and ways we may be able to challenge adverse assessments of credibility. So Lord Justice Green, look at paragraph 58, said that appellate courts will accord due deference to the fact finder who assessed an applicant's credibility. But the appellate court needs to be, to be able to satisfy itself that the fact finder has at least identified the most relevant pieces of evidence and given sufficient reasons, which might be quite concise, for accepting or rejecting it. And at paragraph 59, again, they quote Lord Justice Green and his summary of the approaches that can be taken to the assessment of credibility. Worth a look. Paragraph 69, Lord Justice Singh says this, it is well established that this court will not on appeal readily interfere with findings of fact by the tribunal of fact. This is for familiar reasons, including the fact that the tribunal has considered all of the evidence, including hearing oral evidence, and is an expert tribunal in its field. But the present case was not one in which anything turned on the appellant's oral evidence or the upper tribunal's assessment of it. The upper tribunal did not say, for example, that something he said in oral evidence was inconsistent with an earlier statement he had made to the Home Office. And at paragraph 70, he returns to what Lord Justice Green said in SB Sri Lanka, that if a judge makes material errors in the evaluation of evidence, for instance, because the inter inference drawn from a fact is found is logically not one that properly can be drawn, then the appellate court will interfere. So... If in evaluating the evidence, the tribunal draws an inference from a fact that is not logically one they could draw, that is an error of law. Because as they say, a material error in logic is an error of law. Equally, as he said at paragraph 49, the evaluation of the evidence must bear in mind that the relevant question the court is dealing with is risk not actuality. If the test were that of the balance of probability, a finding that, that a fact has been proved is a binary question. It either has been proved or not, which can only be answered yes or no. But where the question is whether there is a real risk, Green LJ said that does not squarely confront the relevant question. So the key question is an assessment of risk on that lower standard of proof. So when you're assessing a decision of the tribunal, have they conducted that proper evaluation of risk on the lower standard, adopting the approach set out in SB Sri Lanka by Lord Justice Green? Have they drawn an error of logic and an inference that they were not entitled to draw from a particular fact? In this case, the upper tribunal said that, well, MAH could have and should have provided more corroborative evidence that they didn't believe his account. That was the wrong approach and effectively adopted too high a standard. So the Court of Appeal found there was an error of law and found the only outcome was that he had established his case to being a refugee and allowed 
the appeal outright. So it is well worth looking at this judgment. I hope this has been helpful for you. Do cite from this judgment in your representations, in your skeleton arguments, and use this when drafting grounds of appeal, when you're trying to challenge credibility assessments. I hope that's helpful to you. Thank you.